Kia ora everyone, my name's Zach, I love rugby, welcome back to Haka Time Rugby. Now today we're doing a very detailed preview of the upcoming Super Rugby season and I'm joined by Melbourne Rebels hooker, Anru Rangi. Kia ora bro. Kia ora bro. Thank you for joining me today man, I know it's um, a lot going on with pre-season and preparation so I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, no worries, it's, uh, it's always good to reach out to people out there. Cool. Um, for the people, where are you from originally bro and where did you start playing your, your rugby? Um, so my my whānau originally is from Whakatane, yep. um, small country town at the back of Whakatane called Taniatua. Um, but I, I spent most of my life in, in Wellington, growing up in Upper Hutt. Um, went, to, went to school and stuff there and started playing all my age grade footy out there. Um, and then, yeah, li lived there for most of my life before I decided to um, move to Australia. Uh, moved to Perth originally yep. first. Um, gave it a crack over there, and now I find myself in Melbourne. Mm. And it looks like you've uh, what have you been here a couple of years now? 2018, 2019 season. Yep. yep. Um, and a couple of good years by the looks of it too. So, Players Player Award 2018, uh, Members Choice Award 2019, rewarded with an extension, bro. So it's gone pretty well here for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, the, the, the move was good for me. Um, I sort of didn't know many people in Melbourne, so it, it really gave me an opportunity to to focus in hard on my my footy and um, sort of managed to get a few of the benefits of, from that the last two seasons. Yep, feeling like home now, Melbourne. Oh, it's just about as cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's a it's a good spot, it's an awesome city. Um, there's always plenty to do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, no, it's a good spot to be. Awesome. Now, one thing that stood out to me is. Um, when I look at the style of the Melbourne Rebels, it's very much um, fast-paced, you know, attacking focus, um, good interplay between forwards and backs. It really suits your style well. So, what do you think it is about your game that's complemented that style and helped you to be successful? Um, yeah, like like you say, it's um, it's all the all the sort of same sort of footy I grew up with. Mm. Um, New Zealand like to they like to be fast and and skillful and physical there. So. Um, yeah, Melbourne and the style we play there was was a pretty much a perfect match for me. Um, yeah. yeah, just just like to try and get stuck in and, and make things fast, and yeah, that's no, been good. Cool. And in terms of the preseason, this this part of the preseason, bro, and preparation, what's really the focus? I know it's quite early mm. um, from that side. So, what's the focus pre Christmas for yourself and for the team? Um, I, guess, I guess for the team, like um, it's usually always about our conditioning and making sure we're prepared to. To hit the ground running come um, come February next mm. year. Um, me personally, um, probably more about connections with people and players. Uh, we had a had a decent amount of turnover from the last couple of years, so there's a few new faces around, and um, yeah, we just got all about getting bonded and, and working together there. Yeah, on that, bro, it's one one talking point that comes up a lot on my channel around the Super Rugby season. It's it's that usual cycle after World Cup where you see players, um, either in exodus or people moving on. Mm. Um, all teams are affected. Yep. You know, uh, Melbourne Rebels in particular, so Will Guinea, um, Quade Cooper, not with the not with the squad this year. Mm. How do you um, deal with the loss of that experience and leadership? And is there, I mean, is there any way to plug those kinds of gaps? Or um, yeah, like, like obviously those guys leave um, big holes in experience and, and leadership and stuff like that. But some of the more exciting stuff is seeing who's going to fill the, fill the yeah. spots. Um, it's good to see some of the younger guys who, who are now having to fill those roles, and then we're not looking at them like the younger guys anymore. We're looking yeah. at them as the, the guys that are going to lead us um, and moving forward. So, while while it's um, it can be a bit tough losing a bit of experience and uh, and leadership there, it's also very exciting to see these young guys come through and yeah. and put their hands up. Any uh, any names in particular to look out for, or that are impressing you at this stage in the in the gym or on the paddock? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's, there's a, a couple. There's a guy like um, Ise Hahanga. Um, so he's, he's only he's only really young, like twenty odd or something like that. And he's been around. He's been at the Rebels as long as I have. And to see him, um, to see him like uh, perform and produce the, the kind of quality rugby and, and leadership, um, it's, it's awesome, awesome to watch and good to see that nurture through. Yeah, cool. Um, I'll touch now on the Australian Conference and some of the big, I guess, talking points there. So. Obviously, first game against the Sunwolves, um, and Japan in particular running on a high at the moment. I mean, they were awesome in the World Cup. So, did you uh, you catch them? And did you what did you think about their play? Oh yeah, J Japan was awesome in the in the uh, World Cup. Yeah, I think um, they kind of won the hearts of, of most of the world, most of the rugby world out there. Um, they were 
just just the passion and the pride they they put into themselves and their their rugby performances was um was really really inspiring. Um, yeah, moving moving forward to the Sun Wolves for us in, in round one. Um, if, if the World Cup's anything to go by, we're going to really be on our toes. They are they are becoming a very much a, a superpower in, in world rugby. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, they definitely became everyone's second favourite team, I think, as part of the yeah, World Cup. And, yeah. and, you know, some interesting talking points. I mean, there's talk about whether or not they'll be here in future years. Obviously, they retain Jamie Joseph, Tony Brown, so that's good for their continuity. Mm-hmm. Um, have you managed to have a look at their squad, and what are you expecting, I guess, come that first round from them? Uh, not not so much, actually, just just because it's it's quite early in our preseason and our, um, our preparations anyway, we um, really focused on on what we what we have to bring, and um, but un- undoubtedly, like if we're aw- away from the names and, and what they have in their team, their style is going to be, yeah. I reckon, pretty much the same as um, as what they produced in the World Cup for Japan. So, mm. really going to have to be on the ball there. They're very quick. They're very ac- accurate, yeah. um, and they don't they make very few mistakes. So, you're going to mm. have to be going to be on the ball there. Yep. Um, and then you know one thing I love about the the conference model. New Zealand, Australia, or South Africa. It's those local derbies and those local rivalries, you know. So who's that team you think for the Rebels inside the Australian Conference? Not necessarily rivalry, but that team you look forward to, maybe put in that little bit of extra mm. motivation. Mm. Who's that team you think for the Rebels? Oh, yeah, like the, all those derby games mean mean quite a lot to us, um, especially when you're playing each other within Australia there. Uh, probably my personal favour is the Reds. Yeah. Um, they always put up a, a fairly good challenge. Um, the last couple of years, they've, they've had a, a, a few young guys coming through, and um, they're just keen to get stuck in. And the, the yeah. passion to play rugby, um, while it might not be so polished or or uh, perfect in what they're doing, they're just really keen on having a crack. So yeah. you can see the love, love and the passion in them, and uh, they, they're really good to get stuck into. Yeah. And you personally, bro, are there any players you look at and go, "Yeah, I'm, I'm up for this one. I'm looking forward to that battle," or you respect, or uh, you know, looking forward to those those competitions? Um. Yeah, like the, it's always it's always the same uh, throughout, throughout most teams you play. Um, like for me, growing up, Super Rugby was always a dream, and, and now it's reality. So, um, pretty much anyone I come up against, it, it's it's an unreal experience, and um, I still pinch myself most days that I get to come in and do this for a job every day. Yeah. Um, I think last year was the first time I played uh, the Wellington Hurricanes in in Wellington. Um, Quite a bit of my family and stuff there, and that was that was a pretty unreal experience. Um, yeah. Matching up against the likes of Hardy Severe and stuff like that, like he's, in yeah, he's, well, my opinion, the best player in the world at the minute. So that was a, that was a pretty cool and pretty special feeling. Yeah, mm. awesome. Now I've had a look at the draw, and there's probably a couple of key parts to the draw that stand out to me for next year. So I'll just cover those off. The first one's that tour of um, uh, South Africa and then Argentina. Mm. You know, so you play the Stormers and then the Haguaris over two weeks. I mean, it's not a long tour, but it's a a lot of distance to cover in a short amount of time, you know. So, how does the team prepare for that so you get the right performance on the field? Yeah, hey, it's it's quite interesting. Um, our S and C's and um, our medical team do do a fantastic job in making sure that we are uh, we are as prepped as you can be. I guess um, a lot a lot of the work that we're doing now sets us up to be able to to meet the um, demands of the travel yeah. that that Super Rugby has involved. Um, but yeah, yeah, as you say, it's um, it's it's not a long amount of time, but it's a it's a huge distance to cover. I've unfortunately enough done it before uh, with the Western Force. Um, but yeah, like there's, there's all sorts of your recovery and your eating and all that sort of stuff while you travel to these different countries can can sometimes it, it takes a bit of a hit. You know, food's different, um, water quality is different, but um, I, I like to think now I'm a bit more experienced, and I can I can deal with that a bit differently this year and. Yeah, yeah, hopefully still be able to perform at a high level. Yeah. And the other one that stands out to me, I mean, you guys come back, you play the Reds, and then shortly after that, a couple of home games, mm. one against the Crusaders. Um, we know how good they have been yeah. traditionally. And yeah. then the other one against uh, the Blues, so Bowdoin Barrett's there mm. um, next year. So a couple of really exciting games. Do you look, you look forward to those types of games, particularly being at home, bro? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's an awesome stadium. We get to play at, at AMI, uh, Amy Park. sorry. Um and yeah, in any uh, any game there, the the locals or the fans turn out and, and really make it all good atmosphere. Um, but yeah, just the, those are those are two very big games for us, um, particularly off the back of a big treble. So I have to get up strongly for that. Yep. And then probably the other thing I want to touch on is really the South African Conference and 
Did you manage to catch the head performance in the World Cup final? Uh, I certainly did. I yeah, certainly did. Yeah. Um, big, powerful yeah. players. We got we really got our, uh, our work cut out for us, um, particularly physically. For uh, they sort of built their built their whole game and mentality around that. Mm. Um, but like like rugby goes, there's, there's ways of getting around that, and yeah. um, we can be smarter and, and make them and try and work them in different different areas. Yeah. Um, however, there's there's no doubt it, it worked. They're yeah. now the World Cup champions, so. Um, something's working over there. Yeah, and then you probably expect that to filter down with the franchise as well. That that forward dominated game, very much set piece orientated, physical play. Mm. Um, has that been your experience with South African teams? Are yeah, you expecting more of that. Yeah, it's, it's nothing out? new. It's yeah. nothing new to the South African teams. They they love to try and impose themselves physically on you. Um, so it's, it's always a massive challenge when you get out there. If you if you're not up for it and you've got your mind in the right spot, there you you're going to be in for a tough ride. So. Yeah. Um, a lot of that sort of stuff is attitudinal, and you just yeah. got to get stuck in. It's the, the game's off on one in the first sort of five, five to fifteen minutes, when, when uh, you can sort of work out who's who's on and who's not. Yeah. Now we we talk a lot about strategy and tactics on the channel, and um, and when we were having a good look at that game, there's certain areas where you think, well, you've just got to be up for the battle. Mm. You know, I mean, you can try and run them around, but the, you know, when it comes to scrum time, when it comes to line out, you've really got to compete. You know, bite down on that mouth guard, and sometimes just. Have a crack. Is that um, you know, do you see any other ways to really target that kind of strategy, or is a? You mentioned about being smarter around some of the players. Yeah, and sort yeah. of. Um, it's, it's kind of a little bit out of my league. The, the strategy in the, in the cooking <laughs> game, we say. Um, but no, no, like, like you said, you, ju- you just got to be up for it. You've just got to not give an inch, um, and hope and hope that you can, you can. You, you also need a bit of luck. Um, yeah, yeah. You can't can't deny that luck comes into it sometimes in, in Super Rugby here. But um, yeah, for for me and for the Type Five, it's it's all just about your attitude and, and who's up for the big ones and putting putting your body in dark places, go going to dark places, um, and that's sort of how you got to get through that. And then um, you know, there's a Bledisloe Cup match here as well um, in Melbourne announced. So a lot of really good rugby here in in Melbourne this year. Yeah. Um, and it, for me, it kind of gives the Super Rugby season a bit of a different um, feel because there's spots available, mm. you know, there and um, and good performances. There's that carrot there that good performances can be rewarded, you know. Mm. Um, for you personally, bro, you still have that aspiration? Are you still working towards that in the back of the mind, or is that something you'd like? Oh, yeah, hun- season? yeah, hundred um, percent. I don't don't know if I'd still be doing this if I if I didn't have a. A strong, a strong connection to to want to go further and and go and go for more. Um, I, I don't think you, I don't think you you make it in the doors of a Super Rugby club without having a uh, massive drive and ambition and all that sort of stuff. So that that definitely keeps me going and keeps me firing. And um, yeah, just want to put out some good performance with the Rebels and and hopefully things lead on from there. Yeah, yeah. Well, wish you all the best for the season, bro. I hope it goes well for you personally and for the club. Um, and appreciate your time, man. Thank you for joining me. Uh, no worries, Zach. Thanks for having me. Cheers, bro. That's another one that I really enjoyed putting together for you guys. Big thank you again to the Melbourne Rebels and to Anudu for having me down today. If you guys like that content, make sure you hit like. Subscribe to the channel because we've got so much more coming and we are covering everything in 2020. I'm covering the Super Rugby, the Premiership, the Top 14, the Six Nations Rugby Championship. There's an Olympics. It's all happening, guys. And if you don't want to miss anything, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'm also going to be busy reading that book right there. I'll let you guys know how it goes, but I'm excited about getting stuck into that one. That's it from me today, guys. Have a good day. I'll see you back soon.